This episode brought to you by ExpressVPN, the best VPN there is. Take back your online privacy today. I trust you all brought your homework. I'm sorry, why is this mandatory again? Yeah, it's not like the internet is short fan fiction. What some of them have me do with Pocky is just not gentlemanly. Well, as people who analyze nostalgia, it's important to understand the creative process from the people that we critique. So writing for fictional characters will make us understand others who write for fictional characters? Exactly! Your husband leaking bombs in our heads while we sleep might play a part too. Hey, if my little head slicer says something is mandatory, it's mandatory. Where the hell are you anyway? Oh, humanity has come back in time to stop us from becoming them. It raises a lot of complex questions about the ethical responsibilities of- What's this have to do with anything? We need a time travel joke for later. Huh? Speaking of which, Muffin Top, did you finish your Star Wars fan fiction? I'm kind of loving it! Lemon Pudding, we had an agreement. Oh, you're right, I Crusher. Hold on, let me get my phone. Uh, a young person living alone in the desert finds a droid. The droid has information to defeat the army of bad guys, and a wise mentor from the past helps get the droid to the army of good guys. Mother. Well, I'd hate to critique you, Cherry Ice Cream, but that's just the original Star Wars story. Oh, God, you're right. Clearly, I've been lazy and not focusing on what's important. Well, email me what you have, and I'll look it over. Got it. Oh, and don't worry, Benny, I'll get you yours after I read his. I can hardly wait. You don't have to be sarcastic. No, that was me showing genuine excitement. <sighs> the world of fan fiction doesn't exactly have the best reputation. Whether they're read online or sold to spice-hungry housewives, fan fiction is seen as both so corny and so cheesy you'd swear Wisconsin and Illinois had a love child. And there's fan fiction about it. But sometimes there's professional writing that reads like fan fiction, and it's not always a bad thing. You know what I'm talking about, the films, books, and comics that are super fan y but also give exactly what people are looking for. They usually combine elements we all want to see and utilize them sometimes better than massive productions with tons of money behind them. With that said, one of the most fan fiction -y things ever written comes with a crossover I didn't even know I wanted, Batman vs. the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Based on the comic series from 2015, we've seen both these franchises on the show a lot. And full disclosure, this is a spin-off that kinda sounds dead on arrival. I mean, we've seen both of them in so many crossovers, it's pretty easy to become bored by them. I don't know anyone that was demanding this, when people shouted Freddy vs. Jason or Godzilla vs. Kong! Was anyone screaming, oh maybe something similar to Scooby-Doo meets Batman? Sure, that'll work. But this film does what any good crossover should do, get you excited for the possibilities. When you actually think about the rules and characters both these worlds have and what you can take advantage of by combining them, it's surprisingly a match made in heaven. It's the perfect amount of ass-kicking weirdness and we're going to check out why it's so awesome here today. Because let's face it, there's too many people who don't know how to do this stuff well. Cupcake batter, did you base this cute orange droid that everyone loves on me? I'm a hopeless romantic. <laughs> let's take a look at fan service done right. This is Batman vs. the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We open in Gotham City where the forecast calls for blimps and red as a lab called Powers Industrial, who use a dyslexic version of the Riddler logo, show college student Barbara Gordon around. Okay, those are either bad stars or an amazing notepad. The Foot Clan attack the lab, but are stopped by... Oh, judging by their silhouettes, I'm gonna say street sharks. Those things, they were like lizard men or something. They took the generator... Does she think I'm Batman? Wait, this might have its perks. Whatever they are, they're going to regret stepping foot in Gotham. It drives me nuts, too, that I have no idea if that pun was intentional. If it was in this one, there'd be no question. 
Ooh, I didn't know this was a Sin City crossover as well. Though something about seeing the Nickelodeon logo kind of feels off. I keep expecting SpongeBob to cutesy away the badassness. We next see Batman looking over security footage and pack your bags, Alfred, you're fired. We received a call from Commissioner Gordon. He's identified Wayne Enterprises as a likely target for another break-in. I told him we know as Wayne something is always at the center of a supervillain plot. His advice, ironically, was to dress up like Batman to scare them away. Sorry, I couldn't resist. And neither could Schumacher. Oh! Guess we should have a look, they did the thing count. It looks like the Penguin also plans to attack Wayne Enterprises to get first whatever the new visitors are stealing. It's the Bat! I recognize his shell! So I gotta say, everyone looks pretty good in this interpretation, with the turtles thankfully having more differences in their designs than just color bandanas and weapons. The only thing that's a little odd is the shading on their packs. I don't know, it kind of looks like I'm supposed to play them like an ocarina. We're not aliens though, we're turtles. Not the time, Donnie. It's always the time for accuracy, Leo. You wouldn't last two seconds on Twitter. Well, that's going on the foot attack inside, but Batman is there to stop them. Now, what does a ninja clan want with an experimental cloud seeder? I think we can count that as the shit got real moment. You picked the wrong battle, warrior. The voice of Shredder is pretty good, like most versions of him, but I'm not gonna lie, I always like to imagine Uncle Phil doing it. In my book, he's still the OG. Greetings, my subjugated subjects. Who are you, and why are you- Will you shut up? Hey! Imbecilic incompetent! Stop this tantrum and just tell me what's wrong! You never let me have any fun. The film immediately shows it has an understanding of what people want as it gives us a very badass battle between Batman and Shredder. Most of the fight choreography in this is really well done. Shredder barely defeats him, which is pretty surprising so early on in the film, and escapes so he can heal up. Next time, I will not be so merciful. I have a brain and a robotic suit laying in a waterbed waiting for me. I like how both series mock the other for stuff that never made sense. Like, why on earth does Gotham City have blimps? Does New York have mad blimps flying around for no reason? I mean, like, what are they for? Yeah, that is pretty hypocrite. Batman discovers the turtles and each assume the other's working with the Shredder. This fight is fun and well laid out, but there is one problem. Nothing's gonna top that Batman-Shredder battle. You can have other fights, of course, but when the title battle is immediately after the coolest one in the flick? It's kind of like following up Hulk vs. Thanos with Plastic Man vs. Jar Jar. I guess I'm curious, but you blew your load a hint early. It's Ninja Vanish time! Ninja... Turtles? I should consider switching jobs when that doesn't sound weird to me. Raz al Ghul. We see Shredder is in cahoots with Ra's al Ghul. Again, these are perfect villains you want to see teamed up. And they've called upon Baxter Stockman to help them with their evil plan. Take one guess who was probably their first choice to play him. Master Shredder, I trust you procured the Cloud Seeder from Wayne Enterprises. Obviously without it, I can't finish the machine. That's right, David Duchovny. But he sadly had other obligations to let down. I do hope you and your little foot clan can live up to your Reputation. Why not leave the messy details of conquering the world to me? Roz will trade his secrets of eternal life with Shredder's secrets of the ooze, and together they will construct a machine that will bring Gotham to its knees. They even test the ooze on one of Roz's men. I am adorable! The turtles sneak into a closed internet cafe and do some research on their supposed bat foe. Come on, we don't want to be seen. Meanwhile, Batgirl is brought up to speed about what they're up against. The Cloud Seeder is the last piece of the puzzle. Which is why I had to move it to a secure location outside of Gotham. Yes, there's nothing more safe than the CD docks. Nothing ever happens there in movies, comics, cartoons, crime drama. You're a detective, right? 
turtles locate the bat cave pretty damn easily. I'm sorry, how'd you do this? I made a database of every reported Batman sighting and ran it through an algorithm that triangulated against the city's police record. Donnie, nobody cares. Right, this does have Jeff Goldblum as the fly again. And they decide to snoop around. I guess I can technically count these all as one? I'm gonna see if I can access that big computer. Because it's beautiful! Imagine what OnlyFans will look like on this. And I just see the signs of a dude with way too much time and way too much money on his hands. Uh, you're not gonna sell a thing if you keep talking like that. Robin spots them, though, and they have honestly the response I think most people would have seeing Robin for the first time. Aww! It's okay, later he says fuck Batman to legitimize himself. Take that mask off! Now! What are you, five? How did you get in here? I actually like that Robin is kind of a sourpuss in this, as Batgirl seems a bit more lighthearted, so having two optimistic sidekicks would have been a little much. It's also just funny to see the turtles get their ass kicked by a 12 year old. Hey, little guy. Oh, jeez! We're not your enemy. We came to Gotham to stop Shredder and the Foot Clan. So, are we not gonna beat up these green losers? It's not looking like it, no. Yeah, for a film called Batman vs. the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, there's only one fight between them, and at the one-third mark, they team up. In any other film, I'd call bullshit, but I do want to see them work together, and if they just get fighting throughout the whole thing, I think it'd get old really quick. I think they just called it Versus to sell more copies, but honestly, I don't feel ripped off at all. As Shredder and Raz go to the one place that, let's face it, you want to see them go. Ra's Agul means Batman, and I'm just dying for a rematch. I think this proved never have you two team up in the same film. What is Arkham a spa? How are they getting so many of these extra add-ons? Hi! Over here! Hmm, uh-huh. That's it! Just wanted to make sure my makeup wasn't smudging. Shouldn't she like that her makeup is smeared? Movie ruined. Of course they want to meet up with the Clown Prince of Crime, but we'll have to wait to see why, because pizza. I offer to cook a gourmet meal, but they want pizza. Teenagers. I've killed God knows how many men, yet this is my lowest point. That girl and Donatella, meanwhile, try to make their own antidote for Shredder's mutagen. Ooze. We call it ooze. Really? Ugh, I do not like that word. Ooze. Blah, gross. It just sounds so moist. Can't fight crime without first partaking in a cheesy slice. This isn't the time for pizza. Besides, this is New York style. I'm a deep dish kind of guy. Ah! Ah! Oh! The bat signal. Robin, bat girl, let's move. What about them? There's no turtle signal. They really made a toy out of everything, didn't they? Back at Arkham, the Joker literally hacks up his formula for his poison gas in exchange for... <laughs> if you're not getting hard thinking of the possibilities the Joker can do with that hand over every comic you pretended to read! Speaking of which, he breaks all the villains out, sprays them with the mutagen, and does so doing his best Danny Elfman impression. Nurse Harley Quinn? Hmm. Oh fine, Dr. Harley Quinn! You damn straight! In the same way Bill Cosby's technically a doctor. This scene alone should have you hyped up as hell. The Batman supervillains with the Ninja Turtle mutagen. This is absolute fan fiction heaven. Ahem. Speaking of which. Honey Biscuit, your fan fiction is repetitive and safe, but you are sleeping with me, so I will give it a pass. That's fair. That's the exact opposite of fair. And Benny, it was your job to continue Devil Boner's story. Well, I didn't like the direction he was taking the story at all. So I did something different. Wait, can you do that? I killed off the villain, created other subplots, and wrapped up everything except for one part. Hey, wait, come on. I gotta continue the story after you. I said I left one part. Now, Benny, you can't do that, okay? You can't just dismiss what came before because you didn't like it. Why? It's a big trend with horror movies now. Well, email it over and I'll take a look at it. Will the time it takes you to look that over include commercial and review time? Yes, that's exactly how long it will take. You're on a tight schedule. Hey! When you use the bathroom, you always close the door behind you, right? You don't want a random passerby looking in on you. That's a very odd thing to ask for a sponsorship. So why would you let people look in on you when you go online? You mean like... 
go online? Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like going to the bathroom and not closing the door. Oh. Okay, I see what you're doing. Did you know that your internet service provider like Comcast or Verizon knows every single website you visit? And what's worse, they can sell this information to ad companies and tech giants who will use this data to target you. No kidding, that's cool. ExpressVPN puts a stop to this. It creates a secure, encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so that your online activity can't be seen by anyone. Got it. I use ExpressVPN on all my devices. It works on everything, phones, laptops, even routers. So every Everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can still be protected even if they don't have ExpressVPN. Fantastic, wonderful. And the best part is using ExpressVPN is as easy as closing the bathroom door. You just fire up the app, click one button, and you're protected. ExpressVPN is the world's number one rated VPN by CNET, Wired, The Verge, and countless others. Please, God, let me go. Why? When I have this incredible offer. Fast, fast, go. go if you're like say, me say, and say, believe say, your online activity is your faster. business, secure yourself by visiting expressvpn.com slash nostalgiacritic today. Use the exclusive link expressvpn.com slash nostalgiacritic and you can get an extra three months free. That's expressvpn.com slash nostalgiacritic. Okay, you can go too late. That's disgusting. Yeah, it is. Go to expressvpn.com slash nostalgiacritic today. Hey folks, guess what? I'm finally gonna start playing Kingdom Hearts on Twitch. A lot of people have been asking me to play it. I'm finally gonna do it for Disney December and you can tune in and watch it from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can also see us other times, six days a week. Hope to see you there. Gordon lights the bat signal and is introduced to the new crime fighters. What are those? Well, Dad, they're... Ugh, damn it! Kill them. He talks about how Arkham has been taken over by the villains and they apparently have hostages. As far as I can tell, there's no real explanation to how the Mugen works in this one. I mean, in the cartoon, it combines with whatever animal you're around. In the comic, it makes animals more human. This, I guess we have to assume, is the out of the shadows logic. Ironic Gen. It's basically Ironic Gen. If you're obsessed with the cold, you're gonna be a polar bear. If Scarecrow's in your name, you're gonna be a crow. It's stupid in any reality. Except this one! <laughs> the idea of the Batman villains mutating into animals is one of the coolest things you could imagine in this universe, because there's so much that can be done with it. Poison Ivy becoming a plant? Amazing. Two-Face becoming a two-headed cat sharing an eye? Spectacular. Harley Quinn as a hyena is both hilarious and actually terrifying. I'd be laughing my ass off if I didn't know I'd be sleeping with one eye open tonight. You look at that! The bats have made some new best friends! This second of her peeking her head around the corner is legit the last thing I ever want to see peeking behind a corner. <laughs> the fights that come out of this are just as creative, with Mr. Freeze as a polar bear attacking our heroes in the kitchen. Oh, I'm a little busy right now! Always Coca-Cola! I'll show you cool, child. How is it Mr. Freeze as a polar bear fighting a teenage mutant ninja turtle still has more dignity than one line out of Arnold as the same character? Oh, they did get bat nipples on him somehow. There's also a pretty cool fight with Bane. Your ass is gross! And even as mutants, they still rely on their old tricks, as Scarecrow uses his gas on Leonardo, showing his greatest fear. <coughs> There's a funny joke with Poison Ivy not being able to fight because her roots won't let her stretch far enough. Which again, could be seen as a letdown, but there's so much fighting in this movie, I think they knew if they needed to cut a corner, this was a clever and funny way to do it. Better listen to the bat, turtle boy. This all builds up to the Joker, who's transformed into a cobra. Which is... fine? I feel like there's a lot of better animals the Joker could be, like a shark or a gator, you know, something with a lot of teeth. I mean, did you see Harley Quinn, hyena? <laughs> I 
I guess this is a little disturbing, though. <laughs> Ooh. And like that, a new genre of fetish was made. And there's already fanfiction about it. Joker combines the ooze with his venom and ejects it into Batman, strangely enough turning him into a chicken. No, it is a bat. Who are you? I'm Man-Bat. Donnie, catch! Donnie and Batgirl give him the anti-mutagen and eventually stop Harley and Joker. Smile. <laughs> this is totally going on my Instagram. That's gonna get me discovered and arrested, but screw it. If the NC's cat can have an account, why can't I? Batgirl and I found the surviving hostages in a room downstairs. They're fine. Mostly. And now that we No. I need to know what mostly means. Like, are half of them butt people or something? Mostly is a very vague thing to say in this universe. Big surprise, the docks was not a good place to hide something, as the Penguin steals Wayne's device to give to Shredder and Ra's al Ghul. Our heroes discover that the device is going to combine Joker's venom with the mutagen and turn all of Gotham into an insane azulum. But Batman says he wants to stop them without the turtles because something something always alone. You four are impulsive and you don't follow orders. I want you out of Gotham. Pretty tough talk for people who just saved your life. Does he tell his parents? You should have gotten out of the way of those bullets. Lazy dead asses. Sure, we make the wrong moves, but we can't get better. If you don't trust us. <gasps> what was that? The bad arm? What am I missing? Honestly, this is the only section of the movie that feels weak, as this third act breakup seems kind of pointless, but it does fly by quick, and I guess give a moment for the two most brooding characters to connect in some way. They get back to the good stuff pretty fast as they drive off to stop the villain's evil plan. The turtle van even puts on its... 3D glasses, is a little weird, but they upgrade the pizza thrower in a pretty mean-ass way. <laughs> That's right, Donatello killed a man. Awesome. Good thing it wasn't Batman or we'd all go BOO! I don't get comic ethics. They fly now? They fly now! This scene also has my favorite line, as Michelangelo constantly wants to push buttons in the Batmobile, but he's constantly told not to. That is, until they get caught and he's given the direct order to hit every button. I've always wanted to hit every button. This should be medicine to contain how much fun I'm having right now. This whole chase is pretty great, and again, gives everything you'd want to see in the climax of a team-up like this. And... then some. So on the one hand I ask, why is there a dinosaur here? But on the other hand I ask, with all the insanity we've seen? Watching turtles drive a van, shooting pizza manhole covers, riding motorcycles with Batgirl, launching bat fireworks, and fighting the island of Nabumbu? Why wouldn't there be a dinosaur here? Oh, by the way, there's April's cameo. My money's on the T-Rex. He launches the anti-mutagen, though, causing him to shrink. Not that kind of shrink. Yeah, probably that, too. As the villains arm their machine. Activate the machine. <laughs> this is a Jeff Goldblum impression. There probably should be less maniacal laughs and more maniacal uhs. Ah, 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 Our heroes burst in, though, and all of them have worthy foes to take on. That is, except for Robin. I, I surrender. I'm basically a hostage. <laughs> you are a terrible disappointment. Though not as big as Tyler Perry. <laughs> Leonardo even gets over his fear of losing his brother, shown earlier, and uses Batman's advice to focus. And I learned this from a rat. Ooh, maybe I was a centimeter off. Batman as well gets a chance to fight the Shredder once more. No tricks, no gadgets! Dude, you live in a thing called the Technodrome. That's like the world's biggest gadget. This next scene is so ridiculous, I kind of have no choice but to love it. Any last words? Cowabunga. What? Cowabunga? <laughs> it, it's not that Batman said cowabunga, as they reveal later that was the code word for the turtles to attack. It's the Shredder repeating it again. What? Cowabunga? 
Cowabunga? That's only said by party dudes. You're not a party dude! Batman does finally defeat the Shredder, resulting in him falling into a tub of chemicals. I think he did it just to annoy me. And the turtles stop the machine from destroying the city. Batman even joins them in a celebratory slice of pizza. And you think the whole Batman killing using guns or sleeping with daughter figures was shocking? No, no, here's the most controversial thing Batman's ever done. He folds his pizza. There is no excuse for this, a petition has already begun! Oh, and the Shredder is alive. He's some sort of Joker hybrid. But clearly this is the part of the ending to get the biggest reaction! Batman vs. the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is one of the most satisfying crossovers I've ever seen. Is it fanservice-y? Yes. Does it need to exist? Probably not. Are there any deep ethical dilemmas that a lot of great comic book stories have? Not particularly. But it's the perfect amount of fun. It gives the audience exactly what it's looking for in the appropriate way. It would have been so easy to make this too goofy, but the tone, animation, and voice acting keep it grounded in the serious Batman universe, which makes the comedy of the Turtles universe all the more enjoyable. Every main character has either a bond or an arc with another character, and it makes sense why they connect with who they connect with. The threats feel big and exciting, but it's also not afraid to have a good time. This is not a crossover that needed this amount of dedication, which is why I think it should be appreciated all the more. This could have been just another Scooby-Doo meets Batman kind of thing, or an example of bad fanfiction given a budget, but they took the time to find that perfect balance between both franchises and satisfy both sets of fans. If you're a Batman person, a Ninja Turtle person, or especially both, this is surprisingly a kick-ass team-up to check out. Oh jeez, I thought it was pretty good. No, no, Benny's fan fiction, it's terrible! All I can give you is my best. Except when I don't care. Critic, tell me your conclusion is better. Oh, uh, I don't know, I didn't really put that much thought into it. I just made the lead related to someone bad, reneged on half of what Benny wrote, and made some people kind of fall in love. Is that what good fan fiction is all about? Kinda doing something? I don't know, I like Star Wars, just... Not enough to care about making you care. Yeah, well, these are terrible. Cookie dough! <sighs> yes, laser saw! I'm sending you these terrible fan fictions right now. Okay. Great, now toss it into one of those time portal thingies. Ah, uh, this is my phone! And I'm your wife. Can't argue with that. There, it's lost to the anus of time! Well, that is more than it deserves. Wait a minute. Where's it gonna turn up? Ooh, look what I found! Time travel joke. Cowabunga. What? Cowabunga? Hey, hey, hey! If my little head slicer says something's mandatory, it's mandatory! Oh, that's a devil boner's line. That makes a lot more sense. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. Uh, once again, this is a uh, requested charity. Thank you all so much again for that. And the name of it is uh, Layman Lessons. And what that is, uh, this is an organization with no paid staff since 2001. They currently procure and provide $9 million annually in donated food and bottled vitamin water to relieve the suffering of countless homeless and needy people in Tennessee and 24 other states. Supplied from local and national networks of food donors, uh, they trust Layman Lessons Ministries because 99.5% of every donation goes directly to the homeless and truly needy Americans. Uh, if you look at their site, you can see all the various work they do uh, to help as many people as possible. Check them out. I would uh, see if you want to donate. If not, you can volunteer as well. Uh, like so many, um, you know, food pantries and such, uh, you know, really trust them because they're just so good at what they do. Uh, so definitely check them out. And thank you so much for the recommendation. Like I said before, keep them coming. I mean, we have a ton. I mean, we're not short. Uh, but uh, really, thanks to all those that are uh, recommending them because, uh, as I've said, like at the end of all these, but I still think it's true, uh, just the more... Uh, the more of a spotlight we can shine on good people, I think the more good other people will become. So thank you so much and take care.